happened? What happened? Oh. Hello Canadian drone pilots. How is everyone doing? It's good to see you again. For those who are first timers on the channel, my name is Roy and you are watching Creative Aerial Shots. The way to capture aerial shots has evolved over the years. It used to be difficult and oftentimes costs a lot of money. The pioneers in this field used to tie tiny cameras to a kite or strap them on pigeons. In later years, they rigged cameras up on ladders or other contraptions. And more elaborate setups are installed on cranes. But nothing is more breathtaking than capturing the shot from the air. A camera crew on a helicopter is the way to go if you want the best looking aerial shot. But only big budget movie productions can afford it. But nowadays, even a little child can take a decent aerial shot using one of these. I love movies. I love aerial shots. It's been my dream to capture an aerial shot, something that I can brag about. So over a year ago, I got into the drone hobby without any background or knowledge about drones. I thought to myself, it's just a kid's toy. How hard can it be? I was so excited about my new hobby that I bring my little drone with me everywhere, even when I go to work. I love it when we go out working in the field so I can fly it during my break. One day, my boss sent us to his place to fix the leaking barn roof and I flew it there. I did what we call an orbit shot. It was a quick shot that I recently discovered then. And like most guys, I never read a manual. I just winged it and bam! I learned a lot of lessons that day. And I'm gonna share it with you, especially if you're new to this hobby, so you won't crash your drone like I did when I first started. So here's the first thing, and this is very important. Before you even go to the spot where you will fly your drone, you have to assess the airspace. You need to find out a few information that are crucial to flying a drone. Are you close to an airport? If you are, are you qualified to fly there? Will there be constant air traffic in the area? Will your intended operation interfere with manned aircraft? This is one of the harder parts of flying a drone. But you need all these information for a safe operation. And to do this, you can use the official drone site selection tool or the Nav Drone app from Nav Canada. There are third party apps that can help you get through this process easily. The Drone Pilot Canada app is what I use. Check out the links in the description below for the drone related apps. Next, plan your flight. You have to be clear on what you are going to do. In my case, I was doing the orbit shot, but I also did some other maneuvers that day. I flew forward over the barn and I also did some backward flying whenever I needed to reposition the drone. It is important to be clear on what you are going to do because you have to know the boundaries of your operation. Things like your takeoff and landing location and the exact area where you will be flying your drone and how far away you will be flying and will you still be able to see it? How high will you be flying and the maneuvers that you're planning to do? And of course, the route that your drone will take to get to your subject. Now that you have planned your flight and you are at the area of your operation, do a site survey. Scan the area that is covered by your operation for potential hazards. Make sure you know the location of structures, buildings, or trees, or anything that could possibly interfere with your flight. Remember, satellite images from apps may not be up to date and don't exactly match the actual surroundings. If you have to, make some changes to your route or flight path, or you can also change the type of maneuvers you're planning to do. Next is consider the weather. If it's raining, don't fly. Most likely, your drone is not rated to be flown in the rain. What about the wind? 
every drone has a wind resistance rating, meaning it can stay stable up to a certain wind condition, up to a certain wind speed. But wind can be tricky though. A sudden gust can slam your drone onto a wall or a tree or whatever structure close by. So it's your call. Now, if everything tells you it's favorable to fly. Don't let your drone out of your sight when flying. That day when I crashed, I thought I'd let my Mini 2 do its thing. It was doing an automated orbit shot anyways. I thought I could walk away and stay in the shade until it's done. But no, you are your drone's eyes. I could have prevented my drone's interaction with the tree branches if I was watching it do the maneuver. More expensive drones like the Mavic 3 and the Evo 2 Pro have omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. But that's no reason to be complacent because it can still fail in certain situations, which we will talk about in a bit. Now don't get me wrong, I mean this in a good way. If you're just starting in this hobby, most likely your drone is in the lower tier because it makes no sense to get an expensive drone and you don't have any experience flying. So I assume your drone doesn't have obstacle avoidance, especially the 360 degree obstacle avoidance we're talking about. Keep in mind that you can only see what's in front of your camera and depending on the field of view, that is only how much you can see. You can't see what's behind you. You can't see what's above you or below you. You can't see what's to your left or to your right. And that's what happened to my Mini 2. Now let's talk about obstacle avoidance. Because that word sounds so fancy, especially if it's 360 degree obstacle avoidance. Omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. Damn, that drone must be expensive. Most drones don't have omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. The Evo Nano from Autel Robotics and the DJI Mini 3 Pro, they only have tri-directional obstacle sensing. These drones can only perceive obstacles in front of it, behind it, and below it. Same with the Evo Lite, only it's got a wider field of view. The newer DJI Air 2S has an additional upward sensor, but I would say they're only partial upward sensors because it cannot perceive the aft part of whatever is above it. The older Mavic 2 has 360 degree obstacle avoidance, but it's not truly omnidirectional because it has some blind spots around it. Even if the obstacle avoidance of your drone is 360 degrees and truly omnidirectional, it will only work in well-lit environment. When it starts to get dark, like when you're close to sunset, you will notice on your screen that your obstacle sensing is turned off. Most of the time, you will miss the warning because you're so focused on your shot. You're chasing the sunset, the last light of the day, the best colors of the day. And you forgot as you composed your shot that there are trees and power lines in the area. And that's the story of my first Mavic 3. Also, flying through thick trees where it gets darker under the canopy can disable the sensors. Your drone can barely see the branches and could possibly clip some of the little twigs. Another situation that the obstacle avoidance can fail is when you fly through smoke or fog. The sensors cannot perceive contrast of the surroundings. The drone is basically blinded. And last but not least, power lines and clotheslines or other objects similar to these are not easily perceived by the sensors. Remember, these obstacle sensors are just tiny cameras. If it's barely visible from your main camera, which got so much higher resolution, there's a good chance that the sensors can't see them. Make sure you bear these things in mind every time you fly. If I missed anything regarding this topic, please share it with our viewers. Use the comment section below. And if you like this content, you know what to do. I'm inviting you. Let's help this channel grow. Subscribe and click that notification bell so you won't miss it every time we upload a new video. It's been a pleasure sharing these things with you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time.